And this is the very last tutorial I'll ever be giving in this studio. Look around you boys and girls. This is a this is the Florence studio. We've made this place home for over two years and we love this place. Um, and we and we love working here. Um, but we had the opportunity to get an upgrade, so we did. Hey there, and welcome to the very first episode from Flurn's brand new studio. For those of you guys who've been watching along for a while, you'll know that Flurn was started basically out of my living room, and when I could afford it, we got our first studio, and then we moved on to our second studio, and now we've just expanded into a beautiful space that we're gonna call home for the next five years. And I wanna invite you to come along with us on this journey. Flurn is nothing without our fans, and I wanna say a special thank you to everyone out there who's watching this, who's helped us grow into the company we are now. Thanks for being a part of the family, and I hope you enjoy our new studio just as much as we will. We're tearing shit up. The floor! <laughs> Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create graphic art in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And if you haven't noticed by now, we're in a new studio, check it out. New digs. This isn't the permanent location of our episodes, by the way. We just wanted to set something up so we can keep cranking out awesome Photoshop tutorials. I hope you enjoyed that little montage of the move. Look forward to a studio tour video. We're doing, we're gonna totally just go crib style on it. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. Uh, anyway, that's gonna be coming soon when we get this place actually together because it is a wreck right now, but I still wanted to make sure that you get your Photoshop on. So let's go ahead and get into our episode. We, this is, I'm really excited about today's episode. It's gonna be great. So today we're showing you how to create a piece of graphic art in Photoshop. And to do this, I'm using color fill adjustment layers and layer masks. We're gonna show you guys how to use a color fill adjustment layer and then how to define where it's visible and invisible with a layer mask. And then we're gonna be building a target graphic together. We're gonna make it look like arrows have just fired into the bullseye and make a really cool piece of graphic art. We're gonna start off using a solid color adjustment layer. Then we're gonna duplicate that and use layer masks to define our target. Then I'm gonna show you how to transform the selection, modifying it in closer and closer to the center so we can get concentric rings pulling off the target logo. Next, we're gonna show you how to use layer masks to define arrows. We're gonna build one and then duplicate it and rotate it around for a second. And lastly, we're gonna throw a shadow onto the graphic, which is gonna give it a little bit more pop. All right, let's get into Photoshop. So we're starting today's graphic on a totally blank document. I've got a 2000 pixel by 2000 pixel square here. So let's start off by learning what we can actually do with a color fill adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go to my adjustment layers here and go right down to the very first one that says solid color. So a solid color, you can see automatically we've got a new layer, we get a layer mask tied to it, and then we've got a color picker, which is perfect. Now, here's the idea, it's very simple. Choose the color that you want to fill. 
<laughs> you can choose any color you'd like, I promise. We'll, be, we'll, le we'll let you choose it. Photoshop's just gonna, I don't, I don't have any decision-making power in this case. All right, let's choose that color, why not? So that's basically the entire idea. You can move this layer around, you can do whatever you want with it, but it's going to fill the entire document with this color. Now, same like every other layer in Photoshop, it's going to allow you to use a layer mask. Now with a layer mask, I can paint black on my layer mask. And if I paint black on my layer mask, let's just change our brush mode back to normal. If I paint black on my layer mask, then you are able to see through this layer. You can see the, the white basically beneath it. But it's always going to be there. I'm just defining whether it's visible or not visible with the layer mask. Now if I paint white on my layer mask, it's gonna paint it back visible. So the green is always there. It's just <laughs> whether it's visible or not visible. All right, let's go ahead and fill this layer mask with white. So I'm gonna hit Shift Delete, which is our fill dialog, and I'm gonna go down to white. So remember, white on a layer mask makes a layer visible, black makes the layer invisible. So we're gonna say fill this with white on the layer mask, hit OK, and now this layer is totally visible, meaning all the green is visible. So that's really it. <laughs> it's a color fill layer, fills the entire document with the color, and then you can use your layer mask to define where it's going to be visible. All right, so now we know how color fill layers actually work, let's get into our graphic. So I've actually got some colors figured out already here in my swatches. By the way, let's say you have a color that you really like. You find a, a beautiful red that maybe you make this red as your, um, maybe you make this red as, as your logo and you want it very accessible when you're, when you're in Photoshop. There's your red right there. Well, if you wanna paint around with your red and you wanna keep this color for a long, long time, all you have to do is add a swatch. So you can add a swatch if you have this color in your foreground color, just go to window and down to swatches and you'll get this guy here. Now if you add, click on the new swatch icon, it's going to take this color and we'll just call this logo, pretend that it's your logo color and hit enter and there we go. This color is always going to be available to you in your swatches dialog. So it's a very good way to keep custom colors together. So what I'm gonna do is I've already created this graphic, so I already know the, the background, this color fill adjustment layer, I wanna change. And to change the color here, all I have to do is double click right here on the green. So double click right there, and it's gonna say color picker. Now I'm gonna choose this green here because I've already done this image and I know exactly the, what green I want. So we're gonna choose this green right here. All right, great. So we've got our background, we're ready to go ahead and start creating our target. Now for our target, we're gonna be starting the same way that we created our background. So I've got a new col solid color adjustment layer. We're using a bunch of these solid colors today, by the way. Now the color that I want is going to be this red right here, okay? You can choose whatever color you want. I'm, I just happen to know what colors I want already. Okay, that's all red there. Now the next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna to try to make this a target, but you can see it's totally visible. It's gonna cover everything up. So I need to make sure that I select just an area in the center. So I'm gonna use my marquee tool here. We're gonna use the elliptical marquee, and then I wanna make a perfect circle. So I'm gonna hold down shift and click and drag to make a circle. And there we go. Something right about there looks pretty good. So we have a circle selection. Now here on our layer mask, you can see our layer mask is totally white right now, okay? I want the inside of this to be white because I want it to be visible. But the outside of this, I want it to be black. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna inverse my selection. I'm gonna to go to select, down here to inverse, which is now selecting everything but that circle, and we're gonna hit shift delete, and I'm gonna fill this with black. There we go. So now we have just the area inside of the circle as our target. Now, I actually wanna make sure we can keep the circle itself as a selection, because I need to make concentric rings. So I'm gonna inverse my selection again. So we'll go to select and then down to inverse and then this is just right here on my target. So now what I wanna do is create a target which I need circles that have the exact same center and I need these to be stepped in. So what we're gonna do is take the selection from the original target and we're just gonna transform it and bring it in. So I've got my selection right here. I'm just gonna right click and go down to transform selection. This is just gonna change the selection. Now, we're gonna just scale this in. So I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and the Option key, and we're gonna start scaling this in just a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good, and we're gonna hit Enter. 
Now keep in mind, I didn't do anything else on my layer mask. This is just the selection that we're changing. So now here on the layer mask, I want to delete this area out of my target. So we're going to hit Shift Delete, which brings up our Fill dialog. You can also get to your Fill dialog by going to Edit and down to Fill. OK, we're going to fill this with black. This is going to make it invisible. And you're like, that's not a target, but it <laughs> that's not a target. It will be there soon. All right, we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go down to Transform Selection. OK, we're going to bring this in a little bit smaller, something like that. Looks pretty good. A little bit bigger there. OK, now I'm going to fill that with white. OK, we're going to right click. I'm going to go to Transform Selection again. There we go. Let's hit Enter. I'm going to fill that with black. Now we're going to right click and go to Transform Selection again. All right, and right there, we've got the makings of a target. Now, only thing I have to do is create some white underneath it. So I'm going to create a solid color adjustment layer. We're going to go to white, and then I'm going to make sure to make this layer underneath my target layer. And then I'm going to create a marquee selection tool right here around the center. OK, so we've got, keep in mind, we're still keep, we're pretty simple here. We've got our green layer. We've got this layer that we just created. And then we've got white under it. So I'm making a selection right in here. We're going to hit inverse our selection. So select down to inverse. And then we're going to hit Shift Delete right here on the layer mask. And we're going to fill that with black. There we go. And that's our target. So we've created this using concentric rings. And then I just filled in white right behind it. And we've got a perfect target. So we've got our target. Now it's time to create some arrows that are sticking right into it. So the first thing we want to do is define where the arrows are actually going to be visible. So I'm going to grab my marquee selection tool. And we're going to make what is supposed to be an arrow. There we go. That's a, that's a beautiful arrow right there. Now, I have a selection active. So I'm going to grab my adjustment layer. We're going to go to solid color. Now, if I have a selection active already, you're going to see it's going to go ahead and fill that selection with whatever color you choose. So I'm just choosing my colors here. I know for this one I want this brown because I want it to create the arrow. But keep in mind, if you make your selection first, it's going to automatically apply that to the layer mask. Saves you a step. So we just created the stem of an arrow. Let's go ahead and create the feathers. So we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to start off with a selection here. So we're going to click right over here. OK, hold down the Shift key, which is going to allow me to go horizontally, perfectly horizontal across the top. There we go. Let's bring this down. Hold down the Shift key there as well, and then bring this back in. OK, so now that's our selection. Let's go ahead and load that into a new color fill layer. I'm going to grab my adjustment layer, go to solid color, and we're going to go to white. All right, perfect. And there we have an arrow. Really not that difficult, right? We have some feathers, and we have the stick or the shaft. Call it whatever you want. Um, let's go ahead and group those together. I'm going to shift click on the two of these layers. These are my arrow layers. Group them together. Let's just call this arrow. OK. Now let's say I want to duplicate this. Very easy to do. I just click on my arrow group and drag that to the new group icon. And now we've got another arrow. Really cool. So I can do this with whatever I want. So my plan is to make it look like two arrows have hit the bullseye. So I'm going to hit Control or Command T, which brings up our transform dialog. And then I'm going to change my axis point. So right now, if I were to rotate, it would rotate around the center, right? But if I change my little control point here and move it all the way to the left, you can see now when I rotate it, it's going to rotate it about that point, which is very nice. There we go. And we don't have to have it hit the exact same place. We can have it hit right there. All right. That looks, you know, you know what? I like it hitting the exact same place. I'm all about precision. All right. That looks pretty cool. So we're actually almost done with our graphic. And you can see how quickly this goes. The last thing I want to do is create a shadow underneath it, which is going to help bring everything together. So to create our shadow, we're going to grab our polygonal lasso tool, which is nested right under the regular lasso tool. So polygonal lasso tool. Next, I'm going to click here on my target and just kind of come right down here. There we go. And right up 
to my target. Now, this is not a perfectly realistic shadow, but for a graphic, I think it's going to be perfect. So we've got basically just a selection right here that's going to look like it's a, a hard line coming in from our target. So right above our background layer, we're going to create another color, solid color adjustment layer. And this time, I want to choose a darker green color. So we're going to hit OK. And there we go. There is our shadow coming in right off our target. Now, the document's a little bit too big. Let's go ahead and crop this down just a little bit to make everything a little bit more centered, focused on target. Yes! <laughs> you didn't expect that, did you? Cool, and there we go, guys. We probably were like, dang, that was actually incredibly simple what you just did. And we actually have a cool graphic because of it. So you can see these solid color adjustment layers are the perfect way to create a piece of graphic art in Photoshop. So we started today's episode by showing you how to use a color fill adjustment layer and how to use a layer mask to define its visibility. Then we showed you how to save a specific color for later use using swatches. Next, we created the target by creating a circle selection in the middle of our document. And then once we filled that with red, we used the transform selection to bring it in to create the multiple rings. We filled the background with white, completing the target. Next, we showed you that you can use a selection before you create your adjustment layer to define the visibility of the upcoming adjustment layer. In this case, we created the shaft of the arrow. We added some feathers onto the arrow and duplicated it for more effect. And to finish the image off, we used the polygonal lasso tool to create a selection that wound up making the shadow for our graphic art. If you love Photoshop just like I do and you want to keep up with a couple wild and crazy guys, make sure to subscribe to flurn.com. You can just click on your screen right now. We're going to send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode, we're always open to those episode ideas. Leave them in a comment right down below. Hey, Aaron, I think it'd be really cool if you showed us more with HDR. Okay, thanks, James. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, probably not going to go like that, but uh, hey, one can hope, right? And if you have any friends of yours who are into photography or Photoshop, be sure to tell them about flurn.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone. Then we're going to start creating graphics with these layers. Then we're going to start creating graphics with these layers. Then we're going to start creating graphics. I want to I want to create a target. Then we're going to start creating. A, we're going to be building a target. My tablet was in the wrong position. It was backwards. And I left my color checker right, right on the table. Oh, well. <laughs> All right.